Hello and welcome back to the top 85 games for the BBC Micro video countdown series. We have reached the final 20 and coming in at number 20, it's Defender. Well, sorry, Planetoid. <clears throat> this was released in 1982 by Acorn Soft and it was developed by Neil Rain. Um, now, it actually did originally come out as Defender, but uh, had to be hastily re-released as Planetoid for copyright reasons. But, as you will see, this game is pretty much a lift and shift of the original arcade cabinet game from Williams uh, called Defender, which was released in 1981 and uh, developed by Eugene Jarvis. Now, this game um, was a classic arcade cabinet game, but actually it, it grew in reputation over the years. Uh, when it first came out, I think it was not as popular as some of its con uh, competitors at that stage. It's one of the very early 80s arcade games. Um, but it went on to have a huge impact, a huge legacy, and, and it's phenomenally popular with lots of people. Um, it's had a number of remakes. Um, there was a 97 um, release of, of Defender on a grayscale LCD screen um, from Tiger Electronics. There's been um, versions of it for the Atari Jaguar. Um, I think there was even a 2002 remake of it, which used 3D graphics. So it actually put you into the position of the uh, Defender ship. Um, but really, it's uh, it's one of those games which um, has has a legacy all of its own, and the BBC Micro edition of it is amazing. It really powers along, as we shall see. Uh, Neil Rain did an excellent job bringing this to the Beeb, and we're going to take a look at it now. All right, let's start it up. So, Acorn Soft Planetoid. Uh, so you play the part of a laser ship, which is basically patrolling the surface of a planetoid. Um, you are a defender, so you, the aim of the game is actually to defend the population of the planetoid. And you can defend them using your laser gun or your smart bombs. And basically there's a series of aliens that are trying to carry away the inhabitants of the planetoid. You have to shoot them um, before they can carry away the, uh, the the population. If they reach the top, they turn into nasty mutants. Um, but uh, as you get through different waves, there are all sorts of other baddies that come along who you also have to eliminate. Uh, and it's, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a pretty difficult game. And I'm going to say going into this that I am far from the world's best player of Planetoid, but I do really enjoy it. So hopefully you'll enjoy the journey along with me as we play the game. So here we go, the typical Acorn Soft splash screen, classic. And uh, these are the controls, so fairly limited. Um, there are slightly awkward controls, I'll be honest, uh, similar to Rocket Raid that we looked at before. Um, they're, they're not the easiest to sort of use on, especially when you're playing on an emulation, but uh, we'll see how we get on. So here's our ship. Um, now I'm gonna play slowly to begin with, just to try and explain what, what you have to do. So you see these little things along the bottom, they're the people. So you need to make sure that uh, they don't get carried away. Now you can see a chap here is trying to carry it away. If I shoot him, he'll fall to the ground unless I can, oh, well, do a very good job of it there. I was going to say, unless I get hold of him and then carry him to the ground, but of course I then got clobbered. So let's uh, see if we can uh, do that again. I'm going to blat away a few of these baddies first. Um, obviously you have to avoid their little pea shooters. Oh, I've got shot again. This isn't going very well, is it? Um, all right, well, we'll try uh, we'll try to see if we'll just, we'll just have a go at bashing a few of these anyway. Um, and uh, yeah, anyway, I'm sure one or two of them will start to pick up the people. You can shoot the people, so you do have to be quite careful not to hit them. Ah, here we go. Right, now, I'm going to just turn around. Oh, God, hang on. Right, let's just shoot him, and then if I go here, and then down. There you go. Ooh, oh, dear, I've, I've, I've tarried too long, and now we've got an evil spaceship that's trying to hound us. Um, that's because I'm playing too slowly. You're obviously not meant to play at this sort of speed. I'm supposed to play pretty... Oh dear, we've got a mutant already. That means that one of the green guys got to the top with one of the people. And they've destroyed me. So this is not the best playthrough. It's game over already. But as I say, I am trying to explain as I go along. And uh, I will obviously play it hopefully a little bit better. Um, but as you can see, the ship moves along really, really far. I mean, look at the speed on it. You can really fly through here. And you can reverse... Um, it's uh, yeah, it's pretty pretty impressive in terms of the actual manoeuvrability of the. Oh dear, oh dear, there I go again. Uh, I do like the graphics. I mean, they're very very simple graphics. It's obviously an early '80s game, but they're, 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 there's a sort of beauty to their simplicity, if that makes sense. I like the way that it's. Um, I like the way that it's illustrated. Now there are a couple of numbers up at the top there next to my score. Obviously, the life counter is the one that keeps on dropping because I'm rubbish uh, but the um, 
the one next to it is my smart bombs so I've got a number of smart bombs that I can use so if I go over here and press tab um, it blows anything up on the screen except the people now I've only got one left over here one bad guy left you can see at the map along the top shows me where he is I'm gonna get him and that's the wave complete so you get extra points for each person you defend ah, now that's a mega site if I shoot it it turns into all these little tiddlers uh, who are pretty awful, awful. Uh, they will chase you around the screen. Uh, I'm going to use a smart bomb. Oh no, I'm not because it's blown up. Um, that's game over. All right. So I think you've got the idea of how the game works at this stage. So I'm going to try and play it a little bit more. Pay a little bit more attention to. Oh, he says that far too prematurely. I was about to say with a little bit more attention. Um, it's, it's usually best to try and clear the first stage without losing two green lives because it's, it's the easiest stage because you only have to contend with the average green guys who actually are not too much of a threat as long as they don't get to the top with one of the people um, they don't pose too much of a threat uh, it's only when they turn into mutants they really become a problem Ooh. I mean having said that they do obviously shoot at you now hang on we've got, we've got trouble on the map over here we need to uh, I'm afraid I've not managed to save my bod there. He's um, plummeted to his doom. Sometimes, in the interests of not having to deal with mutants, it can be easier to just kill the person before they turn into a mutant. I think I'm too late. No, no, I'm not. I've managed to get him. But of course, you... you oh, no. Mutant time. Hang on. Let's use a smart bomb. There we go. The problem with the mutants is that they're extremely fiendish, um, and they move so fast that... Oh, you got one... Oh, what? Oh, come on. I thought I'd got him. Well, I did get him, but he got me too. Right, come on, that's the last one. There we go. Well, we've managed to get through to the second wave with one life. Uh, you do get extra lives for every 10,000 points. Uh, so if you do play for points, um, obviously you can, you can survive a bit longer in the game. Um, you get more points. Oh, that's been gone. You get more points if you rescue your people successfully. If you really play for points, you you can allow the um, the aliens to collect people from the planet's surface and then kill them so that you can obviously they go like that you see rescue um, the, 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 the falling person they actually can survive over a short distance so you don't have to carry them to the planet's surface if you manage to kill the alien uh, close to the planetoid surface uh, but obviously if they get too far up and you kill them like here uh, he wouldn't survive if I didn't pick him up now this one, oh, hang on, there we go, that's got more points there, oh, he's a bit too close, hang on, right, hang on, there we go, let's grab that one and bring him down to safety, and we've got another one coming up here, so let's get him, and down, oh, and we've got another one over here, oh, oh hang on, I'll try not to, ah, no, 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 oh, it really is quite a tricky game, um, but, I mean, you can already tell that the, the way that it's been transferred across to the field is just amazing. I mean, it really does play like the arcade game, um, you know, similar to when we were looking at Mr. E the other day. Um, it, it, yeah, the, it's, it's a really excellent job, right? If I do that and that, that kills all of those. Well, almost all of them. Um, see, the map at the top is an excellent idea as well. I really do like that as a, as a game device. Um, now, I'm not too far off an extra life. I can just kill a few more bad guys. I should be in for... Here we go. That's the sound of my extra life there, which is good news. Let's kill those bad guys because they're horrible. Now, if you... I think it's when you get to the last, the last remaining survivor on the planet's surface. If they get... Um, if they end up going up to the top... I think everyone turns into a mutant, which, um, well, yeah, I mean, mutants are terribly bad news. Very difficult to to, uh, to deal with because they move so quickly, um, and they tend to kamikaze themselves into you, unlike the your your, your traditional green enemy it doesn't do that. Um, but uh, yeah, let's see what's going on here. Okay, let's see if I can at least rescue that one and come down here. Oh, see, look, it, it, it's a punishing game because you can't play too slowly, otherwise you get attacked by these green saucers. Now, if I just get rid of that one and that one... No, no, no! <laughs> that was the last one! Oh, oh, hang on, did I make it? No, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't think I had enough lives left, but still not a bad score by my standards, at least. So uh, there you go, that gives you some idea. Almost got to the third wave there. Let's see if we can um, do a bit better. Now I might, um, I might, in the course of the video, start playing really badly on purpose just to show you how uh, the game can become even harder. 
might go on a killing spree of the um, the population of the planetoid because then you'll see what happens. Basically, the planetoid itself blows up, uh, and you're 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 left into a sort of basically a you against the aliens mm -hmm. drama, and you've got no opportunity to save anybody anymore. So you're not really defending at that stage. Oh, hang on, we've got mutants going on over here. Hang on, let's kill those with a smart bomb. Um, and then we've got one left. Now there's one. Oh, come on. oh that really is annoying. But it managed to see us through. Now there is one other feature that I've not made use of very much so far, um, which is the hyperspace. So if you if you if you do find yourself running into trouble, similar to the game uh, Asteroids, uh, you can use the hyperspace and just randomly reappear somewhere in the planetoid. But I have to say that my experience of using that device is not great not stellar, because it tends to reposition you on top of an alien's bullet, particularly in these later stages where you've got lots going on. Um, hyperspace, not often the best, but it can save you. Uh, if you're towards the end of a stage and there aren't many bad guys left and you, you feel that you've kind of maneuvered yourself into a bad position, then hyperspace can sometimes save you, but I, I tend to uh, I tend to avoid it. Also, the H key is not particularly easy to get to from where, where your general controls are. Oh no, we've got another mutant. Blat him. Another. Oh no, we've got too many mutants now. Okay, oh dear. How are we doing? We've got on the map. It says we've got one. No, hang on. We've got more than that. Uh, where's this one? Oh no, the flying saucer of doom. Uh, yes. Well, we're uh, you know getting a bit of a uh, bit of a showcase of the game. I I do apologise in advance to anyone watching this who is is a a real aficionado of this game um, because I'm sure that you're far better at it than I am and you're probably screaming at the screen going, "Oh, what are you doing?" But um, the reality is, uh, I'm I'm a fairly a fairly casual uh, gamer and I'm not, not uh, you know, I don't claim to be an expert, but I do really enjoy playing games like this one. Uh, you know, it's in at number 20, not just because it's got a reputation for being a great game, but because I think it's great. And uh, even if I don't particularly make a lot of progress with it, I think, you know, why not? Um, why not have a bash every now and again? Because it's just good fun. Um, in fact, when I was when I was very young, uh, when I first played this game as a child, I didn't really understand fully the sort of game dynamic properly. I didn't really read the instructions, um, and uh, I tended to just sort of zoom around and just shoot indiscriminately uh, at anything that moved, including the people on the planet's surface. And I mean, <laughs> odd as that sounds, it was still quite enjoyable. I mean, that is the benefit of playing an arcade game on a on a home computer. You don't have to worry about uh, filling it with coins to keep playing, so uh, the incentive to, you know, make the most of your lives, you know, just have a, just have a playthrough and not worry too much. That was uh, one of the joys, really, of the arcade conversions. Um, you know, not just about, it wasn't just about practicing; it was about having a good time. Uh, right now, oh dear, I'm, I'm getting through these, uh, the, the population of the planetoid a bit too fast here. As I say, if you if you run out of people to defend, it, it, it gets even harder. So you need to try. Oh my goodness me! A cloud of I think they're called spores. Those ones, like tiny little spaceships. Hang on, if they come into oh dear, I used my smart bomb too early. Let's use it again. <laughs> really don't like those guys. Now we are close. Oh no, just blown up again. Now according to the map, it looks like we've only got one. No oh, no, three. Oh no. Saucer. Now I need to get rid of these green ones. Oh, look, look, you. Okay. Hang on. No, 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 no. Oh, no! That was my last life. Oh, I came close again to completing the level, but alas, it was not to be. Um, now I'm, I'm, I'm in two minds about just going on a killing spree and killing all of the inhabitants just to show you what happens, but. Uh, Part of me seem, part of me feels that that'll probably happen anyway without me trying, because um, as you can tell, I'm not the, the world's best defender, and I, I tend to just focus on killing the aliens in order to get to the next level. Uh, not overly conscientious about saving the population, but you know, now and again, I, oh dear. You know, for the limited graphics that it has, y y you sometimes lose sight of those flying full stops that. Um, really are just as dangerous as anything else and and you certainly shouldn't right i'm going to use a hyperspace here there we go that's taking me out of danger just to 
prove that the facility exists. Oh, I'll probably, probably, yeah, that explosion was the uh, person dying, and I've died again. Oh dear, oh dear. Not doing too well here. Only got one life left, and having cleared the first stage. Don't think I'll. Oh. Well, yes, there you go, case in point. I was about to say, I don't think I'll be making a lot of progress on this attempt, and I did not. But I'm doing a good job of filling up the old high score table there, so uh, I suppose that's something. Not with the most amazing scores. Don't think I'd be winning any high score competitions with that entry. But uh, here we go. Here. <laughs> just took out. Just took out. Oh, you see, the, the aliens themselves can hyperspace, which means that you think you uh, you're in the clear, and then suddenly they just appear in your uh, flight path. Yes, quite so. Uh, Quite a fiendish game, quite a fiendish game, but ingenious. I mean, it, it's, I've, I've read about the history of the game's development and uh, the original Defender, um, they kind of made the point as they were developing the game that, you know, it, it, a, lot of, a lot of space themed games at the time just tended to involve blowing things up and, and not for really any kind of specified reason. It was just, well, you could take something like Space Invaders, for example, you're just, you're just killing aliens non-stop, wave after wave after wave. And I, I think the idea behind Defender, um, or Planetoid in this case, was was to try and give it a sense of, you know, you're, you're, you're killing for a purpose, you know? It's not just the fact that they're aliens means that they must die. Um, it's about, uh, you know, saving saving the population. And I think there's something quite, quite noble in that endeavour for a video game, an arcade game. Oh no, I've released the spores. Oh dear, oh dear. Right, we've got two lives left. No, actually no, that was my, <laughs> that was my second life. Yes, it's not an overly generous game in terms of the lives. I mean, you don't get many attempts at it. I mean, you have to work for your, um, your, your extra lives. Oh dear. <laughs> I got points for rescuing him and then I shot him. Not good, is it? Oh, hang on. There we go. Let's put that down. Oh, there we go, extra life. Oh, which I've just squandered straight away. Dear, oh dear. All right. Now, are we going to clear this level? That's the question we have. Attack wave two completed. I didn't think I'd see the day. Now, you see, I'm not really sure why I'm bringing, welcoming that uh, that triumph, because it's just going to become steadily more difficult. Because I think now on this level, we've got even more spores to, to deal with, I think, or megasites. Those are the little red balls, those little things there. Oh, dear. That, I think, was the end of my uh, attempt, but, you know, we got through to the third wave. Interestingly, not with a higher score than when I only got as far as wave two, but that just goes to prove the point that with this game, if you play for points, you don't necessarily have to get as far as possible through the levels, because um, if, you, if, you, if you game the system and just make sure that you save the, uh, the inhabitants, or, or allow them to get captured and then save them, you can actually uh, do a pretty good job on the on the points front. Now, according to the map, I've got one quite high up here, so let's get, try and get him. Ooh. Oh no! Oh no! Hang on. Right, we definitely need to rescue that one, otherwise. It's... Oh no! Mutant territory. Oh dear! Oh dear! Oh dear! I have to say that uh, design of Alien is quite iconic. If any of you have ever done uh, any kind of BBC Basic um, VDU sprite tutorials, uh, that sort of sh shape of Alien is quite quite a popular one. It was quite popular in some of the type-in listings back in the day as well for Aliens. Um, it's a good uh, type-in listing book I bought uh, a couple of years ago, uh, which is about developing your own Space Invaders game in BBC Basic. And uh, yeah, the design of the Invaders is uh, is actually pretty similar, if not the same, as the, um, the ones here. So, yeah, it's got a, quite a pedigree. It's quite a it's quite a, a sort of menacing little sprite, sort of vaguely skull-like, squid-like. Um, well, that was the end of that attempt. Now, I uh, okay, I'm go I am going to do what I, I thought I might try. So what I'm going to do here is just try and kill all the inhabitants and just show you what happens when that uh, takes place. So here we go. I'm going to just commit the ultimate uh, treason here, totally going against my um, my role as a defender. Let's kill all these ones as well so we don't have them turning into mutants because that will probably end up with me dying before I get to see the result of my, my carnage. Uh, now according to the map we've only got two left, there we go, and I think it's just this one here. 
There you go. Whoa. <laughs> so everybody turns into a mutant at that stage. The planetoid blows up. And, uh, yeah, it just becomes impossibly difficult, really. I mean, <laughs> look at this. Although, you can just sort of fly around and, and hope for the best. Um, so you just just really, yeah, play, play your luck. But, I mean, you're really not going to do very well at this point. I'm actually not entirely sure whether the planetoid comes back. I think... I think you just get wave after wave of this. Um, it might eventually get restored, I'm not sure. But anyway, I thought I would just give you a demonstration of that because uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's quite entertaining. Okay, we're going to give it one more serious attempt uh, and then I think I will probably say that uh, the, the review is, is complete. Um, as I say, as I said at the start, I'm by far, no, by no means the best player of this game, but I do really enjoy it and um, I dare say that uh, Many of you watching are far better players than I, but uh, it gives you a good taster for the game, I think. And if by any chance you've not played this one before, um, whether you've not played Defender in any in any uh, context, or perhaps never played the BBC Micro Planetoid edition of it, I mean, I would hope that on seeing this you might be thinking, well, I can do better than that, um, and and give it a go, give it a go. I mean, it is difficult. It's no. No question about it. I mean, I'm rubbish at it, but but, but at the same time, it isn't an easy game. Um, but it is an, it is very very entertaining, and uh, it's, it's got so many good um, sort of ideas going on that it's it's very easy to love. I think uh, we've got mutants going on now. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to deal with that. Hang on, let's turn around and smart bomb him. Oh, hang on, we've got another one. That's hyperspace. And oh no, that was that was. I managed to use my smart bomb, but only killed the uh, flying saucers there. Uh, ooh, ooh, he's behind me. Here he is. Come on. There we are. So I'm out of smart bombs now, which is probably not the best. Um, oh, and I think that's probably the end of my attempt. Not the most of my, not the most serious of my attempts in this uh, in this review, but there you go. That's. Uh, that's where we're going to leave it today with Planetoid. Um, it's it's an amazing game. It's really really good fun. It's got so many different clever gameplay dynamics to it. I think the graphics are crisp. Um, it's got a very sparing but clever use of sound effects, um, and it really does deserve to be in the top 20. I've brought it in at number 20. Um, it's going to be vanishingly small differences from here on in between each game. Um, this could easily have come in at 15, at 10. I mean, the fact that it's come in at 20 is more of a reflection of the greatness of the other games that are available for the BBC Micro. Uh, Planetoid can hold its own uh, against any of them, um, and it really is a, a special game. So I hope you've enjoyed the review. I hope you've enjoyed watching me die a bazillion times. And uh, if you've not played it before, do go and give it a try because it is well worth it. And for a very early entry in the early 80s, 1982, it really is an outstanding uh, game from Neil Rain and Acorn Soft. So hope you'll join me for the next video in the series. And until then, goodbye.